Day to all of the fathers in the house. Hope you have an opportunity to enjoy your day with your family and relax a little bit. Uh, do whatever it is you, you, you have in your heart to do. Amen. Amen. We are we are our fathers on, on today. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just glorify your name and thank you once again for the opportunity to come into your house, dear God. Father, I pray that you would be with me as I speak to your people, dear God, that the word that goes forth would be encouraging to us all, dear God. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would uh, just uh, touch us, dear Heavenly Father, encourage us. Father, I pray that you would meet the needs of these, your people, dear God. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as the word goes forth, that it will be ingrained in our, our hearts, dear Heavenly Father, and planted deep into our hearts, that it will grow, dear Heavenly Father, and that we would leave here, dear Heavenly Father, better and not bitter. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I, I, I played the last song uh, because as I was thinking about what we were going to talk about, that song kind of came up and it's like a uh, a throwback from, from from years ago. I kind of thought about uh, uh, on a previous praise team that, that that I was on. We used to sing that song often, and, and uh, it, it just means a means a lot to me. And, and the words are are awesome. Uh, but to die, the the title of today's message is to remember God is our Father. To remember God is our Father. And so in your Bibles, I want you to turn to Psalms 103. And I want to start by just reading one verse of Scripture um, that we kind of take the title from. It, when I was reading this, uh, especially in light of the fact that it is Father's Day, um, this verse just kind of just, just really, really spoke to me. And the Bible says this, Psalms 103, verses 13 says, The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. And so I, 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 I want to ask you just this question. Have you ever stopped to think about what it means that that God, for God to be our Father. Have you ever stopped to think about that? I mean, think about this. The, the all-wise, all-knowing, all-powerful, mighty God who, who made the heavens and earth, the, the God who is glorious and magnificent, and the God who owns the cattle on, on a thousand hills, who opens doors that no man can close and closes doors that no man can open. The God whose plan of salvation enables us to have eternal life uh, through Jesus Christ. The, the God who is able to keep us. The God who is able to deliver us. The God who provides for us. The God who frees us. The God who sustains us. I can go on and on and on about God and what he does for us. That's the God who is our Father? Who is our Father? Oh, it says Acts. No, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it, I, okay. It, it's 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 uh, Psalms uh, 103 verses uh, 13. Mm -hmm. My apologies. Thank, thank y'all for, for all the people that pointed that out. You know, thank y'all for that. So I can provide clarity. But but think about that. God is our Father. He is. He he's he's a. Uh, he is the one who, who we can turn to, we can look to, and, and he, he's our father. And, and so uh, when you think about all that verses 13 is communicating to us, it's humbling to me. It's humbling to me to think about uh, God in this way. He, he is our father. In fact, I, I, want you, I want you to just say that God is my father. Just say that again. God is my father. When, when, you, when you think about that and, and you know... Uh, Think about the truth, the powerful truth in that statement that God is my father. 
And so as we, 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 we go on today, I want to encourage you to remember that, that God is our Father. And so here are a few reasons uh, why we should take time to remember this powerful truth. The first thing that I want to point out to you is that uh, we should remember that God is our Father because it reminds us that we are His children. That's simple, right? That's, that's basic, you know. But from a human perspective, from a human perspective, I stand here and I'm able to wear the title of a father because I have children, right? Some of you all are, are fathers in here. You're able to, to, to we, we call you a father because you have children. Be adopted children, uh, children by marriage, uh, biological children, but, but it, it you being a father implies that you have children. And when we say God is our father, that means that he has to have children, right? Uh, Captain Obvious, but you and I are his children. We are his children. Uh, if you look at uh, 1 John, First uh, uh, John, the third chapter, verses uh, 1, the first part of verse 1, it says, it says, see how much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children. And that is what we are. You and I are sons and daughters of God. We are his children. Uh, John, the, the, the first chapter, verses 12 and 13, says this, but to all who believed, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. We can't, we can't, uh, we, we can't underscore that, uh, 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 overemphasize that enough. When you accept Christ, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a child of God. I mean, think about that. Think about that. You are a child of God. And again, when, when, I, when I think about that, you know, just saying that over and over as I was meditating on, on the message and, I, and I, was, I was looking at and thinking about the fact that Look, God is my father. That, that's, that's encouraging. It's humbling because, you know, God Almighty decided to, to, uh, to uh, adopt me, and we'll talk about that in a minute, decided to adopt me as his child. If you've accepted Jesus, God has adopted you as his child. The, the implications are, are incredible. And so uh, whenever we think about that, the fact that God is our Father, we should uh, be grateful for the privilege of being His child. We also want to remember that God is our Father because it reminds us that we are adopted into His family. Now, for those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, the Bible talks about the fact that we are now adopted into the family of God. We are, we, we are adopted and have become his children. Uh, let me read uh, Galatians, the fourth chapter, verses uh, four and five, and it says this. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for, uh, for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Now we understand that Jesus purchased our freedom with his blood when he died on the cross. And he rose again on the third day. But notice how Paul uses, uh, he says, Paul says that God sent Jesus to buy our freedom so that we could be adopted as God's very own children. Now, uh, under, under the Roman uh, law, uh, adoption, it, it, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a legal term that uh, allowed the person that was adopted to have full rights as the son. So he shared equal rights with his brothers. So uh, that means that, that once the adoption was final, the new son, he enjoyed the same benefits, he enjoyed the same access to the possessions <coughs> 
as if he was a natural born son. So again, think about that. Think about that and what's, what's going on here. When we are adopted into God's family, uh, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that means that we share, we have access to God, and we share uh, uh, in the possessions that, that, that God has. We share in the blessings that God has for us. Look at Romans, the uh, 8th chapter, verses 17. It says, and since, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share in his glory, we are also we must also share in his suffering. But notice how it says that we are heirs of God's glory. We are heirs of God's glory. We have access to uh, share in the, the glory that will be revealed when, when Jesus comes back. So we, we are, are, are joint heirs with Jesus. That's what that song was talking about. We are joint heirs with Jesus. That means that I, I want us to, to, to take a moment to, to really think about that. As a child of God, as a child of God, as a, when you are a believer in Christ, you have access to God. You have access to, to the blessings of God. I mean, as his child, my, my children, my children have a, have a special relationship with me, right? In that, if they uh, need something, they don't have to, to consult my, my calendar, they don't have to, 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 you know, ask somebody. They can just walk right into my office or, or whatever and, and because they have access to me. They can just, that, that's, that's, that's one of the benefits of, like, there's, you know, that's one of the benefits of being my child, right? My son, my daughter can just come in. They can call me and, and I'm going to take that time just to, 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 to pay attention to them, right? It's the same way with God. And I think that, that sometimes we have to allow ourselves to think about God in that way. You know, uh, uh, think about God as a tender, compassionate father who wants to be there for his children. I don't know about you, but that, that, that kind of gets me excited when I think about, when I pause and think about the fact that God looks at me uh, and, and accepts me as his child. And that means that everything that, that, uh, that a natural father would do for their children, God would do for me and much more. So I have access to him. And, you know, uh, we have full rights as a son, as a daughter of God, as children of God. Adoption is another reason why we should remember that God is our father and be thankful for the fact that we are his children. We also want to remember that God is our father to remind us to live the way God wants us to live. So remember, uh, remembering that, remembering this powerful truth that God is our father, it should prompt you to live the kind of life that God expects for you to live. Now this one, this one, uh, uh, this one hit all of us, right? So 1 John, the third chapter, verses 9 says this. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sin because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. All right. So let me spend some time, some time here, right? If you are a son of God, if you are a daughter of God, the Bible says... The Bible tells us here that when we are born to God's family, we don't make it a practice. We don't, we don't make it our practice to sin. We don't make it our practice to sin. All right? Uh, God expects for his children to live righteously. He expects us to be holy. He expects us to be the light, light uh, in this world. He expects us to be salt. He expects us to live in a way that brings glory to his to his name. In other words, you can't live any old kind of way if you're his child. You can't. You you put it like this. You shouldn't. You ought not. There should be something different about you. There should be something new about you if you are uh, his child. And so everybody who has, has, has uh, confessed the name of Jesus, 
I, I just, I just, just, just by a show of hands. Everybody who's confessed the name of Jesus, just raise your hand. If you haven't, then we can we can fix that, right? Uh, but so so, I'm I'm, I'm going to assume that I'm talking to saved people right now, right? Can I can I do that? I'm assuming I'm talking to saved people right now. So as a saved person, as somebody who has given their life to Christ, you ought not you you you, you shouldn't be living uh, any old kind of way. There should be something different about you. The old way of living is gone. The Bible says that the new has become. And this scripture here says that that uh, those who have been born into God's family don't make it a practice uh, of sin. We, we can't keep on. We can't we can't keep sinning. We can't keep doing the things that we once did before we had an encounter with Jesus. That's just what the Bible says. Uh, we, we live a, a, a life free from the penalty of sin because of what Jesus did. But get this, we also live a life free from the power of sin. Sin doesn't have to dominate our lives. Sin doesn't have to dominate our lives. That, 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 uh, because of what Jesus did, he gives us, the, he gives us power to, to, to overcome sin. <clears throat> Look at Romans, the eighth chapter, uh, verses uh, 15. In 16, it says, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Fear is not my future, right? Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his children. Now, when you call him Abba Father, now we can, now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. So that's saying that, that, that the Holy Spirit comes into us, lives in us, and it's the Holy Spirit that, that, that gives us the power to, to live above sin. He gives us the power to, to live the way God would have for us to live. That means that you have help. That means that you have help. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, uh, you have help. To overcome every situation that you find yourself in. And so when you're tempted, you have help. When, when, when somebody is getting on your nerves, you have help. When things are not going the way that you would want them to, to, to go, you have help. We have help to overcome uh, the things that, that, we, that, we, that we encounter. And so this, this verse here is letting us know that we have the Spirit of God in us. And so we, we shouldn't live, we shouldn't live uh, the way we used to live. That doesn't mean, I don't want you to, to misunderstand what I'm saying. That doesn't mean you won't sin. Doesn't mean you won't sin. But let's just be real. Let's just be real for a second. You know, some of the things that we that we engage in. We know that's not right. We know that's not right. Some of it, some of the stuff that we engage in, some of the stuff that we allow into our lives, we know. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, don't 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 look at anybody else except for you. Examine yourself. Some of the things that we allow into our lives, we know that it's not of God. We know that we shouldn't be doing those things. And yet, because of the Lord and the power of, of, that we allow sin to have in our lives, we engage. We do those things. I'm here to remind you that as God's child, as his child, the fact that you belong to him, that, that, there, there, should, there should be some those things don't have to dominate your life. You don't have to dominate your life. You can be free from the power of sin. Now here's the blessing of God. Here, here's, here's what makes me just want to praise God even more. The, the, the fact that this scripture is telling or the scripture before was telling us that look, sin, we, we shouldn't practice sin. We all understand that. But I am telling you that you might sin. Now here's the blessing of God. God says that if you do sin, 
and you confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive you from your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So we are never without hope. I, I, that, I, I can appreciate that because I know me and I know I mess up. I know I have uh, husband fails. I have father fails. I have, I have failings, on, failings on my job sometimes. I know I mess up. But even if you do mess up, God still loves you as his child. As his child. You know, he, 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 will, he will discipline us as his child, as a good father would. But he never stops loving us. He never stops loving us as a good father. He, 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 he never stops taking care of us. Even when you feel like you're going through something and it's tough, it's hard. I encourage you to remember that God is your father. Remember that God is your father. And, and, and when you sin, when you mess up, he's, he's that good father that you can go to. And, 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 and as you go to him with a repentant heart, guess what he'll do? He'll forgive you. They'll forgive you because that's just the way that he is. He's a good father. He's a good father. I, you know, a lot of times when we mess up, when we mess up, the enemy is right there letting us know how bad you screwed up, how bad you messed up, and 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 he and he uh, he he gets you. To think about the fact that you, you, you sinned again. And he tries to convince you that you can't do this thing. He tries to convince you that, that God, that God uh, uh, doesn't love you. I'm here to tell you that that's simply not the case. He's a good father. He is our father. And he loves us. No matter what we do. Now. Don't manipulate the message. What do I mean by that? Don't go out of here saying, well, since God is going to forgive me, I can do whatever I want to do. <laughs> like I said, we, we know what we know those things that shouldn't be in our lives. I encourage you to, 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 to take care of it. We have help in the person of the Holy Spirit. We have help. But God is our Father. Remembering that God is our Father reminds me that I'm His child. It reminds me that I'm adopted into the family of God, meaning that I have all rights and access to God the Father. And it reminds me that I shouldn't be living any old kind of way. I should be living like a child of God. I should be living like I'm like I'm blessed and I have access to, to, to God's provision, to God's forgiveness. I should be living like that. And so today, I just encourage you throughout this week, as you uh, uh, start your week, I encourage you to remember that He is our Father and He's a good Father. Amen. 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 Normally, we would have another song, right? but let's go ahead and stand. We'll, we'll end. Amen. Once again, happy Father's Day to, to all of our fathers. Uh, just remember that, that, that God is our Father. And no matter what you're dealing with or no matter what you're going through this week or, or even today, some of us have, have come in here today and we have some things that, 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 um, that may be preying on our minds, just, just working, working, that we have to work through. 
we have a, a, a compassionate God as our Father who loves us and who cares about us and who is able to keep us no matter what we're doing. So I encourage you this week to, to remember that. Amen? Okay. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we glorify you, thanking you for what you've done for us. We thank you for the message, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you that you are our Father. And I pray, dear God, that as we go through this weekend, if things should come up that are challenging for us, I pray that you would help us to remember that you are you're, you're there to help us. The Bible says that you are a very present help in the time of trouble. And so we trust you and we depend on you. And we thank you that you are a good father. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, but never your presence, I pray that you would go with us and be with us until we have an opportunity to return again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.